Hello friends and fellow YouTubers. I hope you're all doing great today. Um, so two years ago I built this forge press and I decided that it's about time I make a video about it and I've been using it give or take for a year. I've only used it really for 10 hours because I procrastinate a lot and I'm really lazy but um, today I got it out and I'm gonna make some Damascus and so I figured I'd get out the camera and show you guys how it works and I'd tell you some of the characteristics that I like about it. So I watched around 20 hours of YouTube videos. Um, collectively I've done probably about 30 hours of research on forge presses before I built this. Um, so I went and I collected all the best characteristics I could think of that I wanted in my forge press before I built it. And so I went and I collected them and this is a pretty good composite of the best traits that I can think of. And so one of the first things that I want to show you guys, and this doesn't really look like a forge press, and you'd be right because this is the die plate that goes in the forge press. And in the forge press you have your top die and your bottom die, and between them you squeeze your material, right? And so you want those to be interchangeable so you can do different things with the forge press. I think that's an important thing that I'll touch on a little bit later. But to start with, this is my basic base plate, and it is 12 inches wide this way, and it's 8 inches, wait, 12 inches long, 8 inches wide. And I made it so you can put anything on it. And so right here, I have one of my dies. This is a bottom die. And right here, you can see I have a large, long, flat, and wide piece that I can flatten with. So the top die is identical to this one. And so it meets up. And so I can flatten here. Here, it's slightly rounded so that I can still press, but it's, oh, it's just not, you can do more squeezing right here. And this is just domed. Like, if you look at it, you can see it's just domed. It's like, yeah, you can see that. <laughs> so it's domed so that you can spread material lengthwise when it's in the press. So right here, you can see there's just a little flipper. I flip it up, and this whole thing just slides into a relative. So you can change out the dies fairly easily and see this is the top die and the bottom die. And this is where you put the material. So a better explanation of why I made the dies the way I did. Right here I can really round, I can really stretch out. Right here is kind of the medium where I get the big bumps and dips out that I create by using this. So right here I smooth those out and then here I can flatten material like if I'm making a blade then I need it to be true before I go to grinding. So I can put it in here and squeeze it perfectly flat between these two dies. And that's why this is the way it is. I made my press with a berth of 26 inches so that I can fit a full metal break in here so that I can shear, bend uh, any type of sheet metal up to probably like an eighth, three eighths of an inch. No, not three eighths, that's, that's too big. <laughs> but just so I can play around with plate and um, for fabrication purposes. Something I also thought was important is that I made this 30 inches interior from there to there. And the reason that I did that is so that eventually I can upgrade to a larger like 40 ton ram that can fit from here to here because right here is 21 inches. And that's, that's bigger than this jack needs obviously. I have this fully extended. And the reason I did that is just so that I can put in a bigger RAM if I ever want to. And I also overbuilt this so that it had the capabilities to handle that. I, uh, it's like a triple pass 7018 well on pretty much all these joints except for the ones that just join the 2 by 2 inch square tubing that's 8 inch wall. Um, I made it 8 inches wide here and 4 inches wide there and I used two I-beams on the top and bottom. This top anvil moves up and down. This is stationary so that your re you can rest your workpiece and it is solid. It is solid, it is to the ground. And so the, bottom, the top is coming down. I have seen ones where it's coming up. That's just awkward because then you're constantly raising and lowering the whole workpiece with you. Whereas this, the workpiece is always in the same place and the top comes down. This 20 ton jack has 40,000 pounds of pressure. That's pretty good for 120 bucks. And then this is air over pneumatic hydraulics so that I have it hooked up to a foot pedal down here so that I can operate it with my foot and I can release it with this handle. And I put this handle on here because originally it was just designed to use one of the pipes to fit over here to twist it, 
but I wanted it so that I could also, while I was using the foot pedal, so that I could pump, so that way I could increase the speed at which it closes because metal cools down fast and so you want to maximize your work time. I made it so that this is entirely removable. This jack can be removed, the height can be adjusted by this screw so that I can have some capabilities to fit a large Damascus billet down between the dies. Uh, the max size of the Damascus billet I'd ever put in here is 8 inches, so I made sure that I can open the jaws with accounting for the height of the dies so that I could have an 8 inch berth. I put some uh, guides on the rails so that when this thing moves up and down, it has some slop in it. You can see that it will it'll wiggle side to side a little bit. And it needs to have that or else it will bind up and it won't move. But you got to have the right amount of slop. So just like, I think it has about a sixteenth inch of give in each one of these. So combined it has like an eighth inch of slop from side to side. Which seems to be adequate. I haven't had any problems with it jamming up on me. But when I did first build it, I made these guides too tight and it wouldn't move at all. I made everything too tight in here and it just, it was all jammed and I couldn't get it to work for a while. I had to cut it up and open it up just a titch so that it could actually operate. I'm going to stress safety. This is extremely dangerous, I believe. If, if you have 20 tons of pressure inside a box, a framed in pressure, then it could potentially explode. And I don't know how exactly that would happen. Maybe it would just crack and bend, I don't know. But I know that I overbuilt this intentionally because I never wanted to risk it blowing up in my face. And so make sure that you have strong enough of a welder that can get deep penetrations, so that you have really solid welds, or that you bolt it together heavily. You can go to Harbor Freight and just buy one of their 20 ton presses, they have them. And then you could switch it out for an air pneumatic, and this is probably one of the best ways to do it because this was fun to build, but honestly, in productivity it would have been easier just to buy a press and modify it for this purpose. Um, but again, with safety, just make sure that you really build it solid. I mean, you don't need to overbuild it. I made it a little bit bigger than I needed to. Honestly, it could be like two feet tall and this wide, and I could fit my dies in, and I could make my Damascus, and that'd be fine. But for uh, 40 bucks extra in steel, I made it a little bit bigger so that I have the extra beef for my personal security and the ability to put in a bigger RAM beat this thing up and so that it has greater capabilities down the road if I ever need it. Quick update on my propane forge. It performs wonderfully. I have made just enough Damascus, you can see, that I totally trash the plate. This borax that you put on to shield the steel just totally eats it. Look at that layering right in there. That's crazy. So today I just barely replaced and put in some fresh new bricks. Look at that. That's that's, that's crazy, but I did put fire, I made sure to put fire bricks in the bottom so that the borax would eat that up instead of the expensive uh, kale, kale wool that you put in there as normal insulation. I just felt that it was important to make it so it could be exchangeable and I'm glad that I did. Waiting for this puppy to heat up. It takes about five minutes at 18 PSI, so I've just been dancing. So this is six hours later. I forged out the billet and I cut it in half and I made this blade. I forged this blade. This blade started out as this. So these are the whoa, these are the two halves, right? And so I took the half and I stretched it out into this blade here. It's kind of staccato. But I still need to bevel it and then etch it and put a horn handle on it with a nice little brass uh, guard. It'll be nice. I'll have to show you guys the finished product. But anyways, that's my 20 ton forge press. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you, and have a nice day.